evacuate their houses. So they're all in a community center now. And they're bored. And they're alone. And they don't know what they're going to do. So what I did was I got each and every single one of them their own individual copy of Twister on VHS star. <laughs> Silence, please. For just a few weeks ago, Bill Paxton passed away. <laughs> Is it too soon? <laughs> well, my friends all keep saying that I'm inconsiderate and I don't know what I'm doing. So I decided to do my own research and realize that I may be contributing to a phenomenon known as the SECOND DISASTER! NPR states on May 13, 2016 <laughs> that the SECOND DISASTER occurs when kind-hearted outsiders send so much help to a disaster zone that it actually ends up getting in the way. Kind of like when my doctor prescribed Prozac, but I didn't really read the side effects, so now I'm just sad and horny. <laughs> <laughs> The National Post states that the SECOND DISASTER <laughs> results in clogged runways, overstocked warehouses, and harried emergency coordinators who keep getting distracted by the logistical nightmare of yet another shipment of old, torn up t-shirts. And nobody should be forced to accept something as old, worn out, and covered in pee-pee as my childhood twin size mattress. <laughs> For a president. <laughs> Examples of the second disaster can range from donated clothes rotting out of each in Honduras, eventually just being lit on fire and thrown out to sea, to fur coats being donated in Florida. Because if you didn't know, hurricane season conveniently aligns with tax season. Or if you're Don Go Trent, oh, what season? <laughs> because what's your other house thing? <laughs> Anyways, the misguided aid brought by outsiders only makes conditions worse. If we truly want to help individuals rebuild for a better future, we must put an end to the second disaster. To provide this change, we'll first file for the causes of the second disaster and try to see why we donate all this crap. We'll then head over to the sorting facility and pick out a few effects we've got here, before finally taking a look at the two non-perishable solutions that we can actually take home with us today and use. The first major cause for the second disaster is seen in the fact that there is no system of organization internationally to determine what is needed for disaster strikes. Which makes perfect sense, because according to BBC on April 18, 2016, we've only lost 8 million lives and 7 trillion US dollars to natural disasters since 1900. Helen Keller saw... No. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Keller heard... No, no, no. <laughs> well, Helen Keller knew about this shit! <laughs> In August of 2016, floods struck Louisiana, forcing individuals to evacuate their homes. However, CNN posed a solution with a page on their website titled, How to Help Louisiana Flood Victims. This page included 18 different links, all to non-governmental organizations providing the exact same needs of food, shelter, and water. Now I think with 19 we could have really hit that nail on the head. This 18 is just going to be where we draw the line, isn't it? This clear lack of organization shows that individuals don't know where to donate, so they either don't or contribute to an excess. The second cause of the second disaster is seen in the fact that we all experience a sense of first world guilt when we see others in need. Like when I saw you. <laughs> probably the only time she's got a little tournament anyways. <laughs> Viewing the world through a privileged lens clouds our judgment as donors, and we feel an overwhelming urge to give. Like when that ASPCA commercial comes on. <laughs> and then you hear her. <laughs> Director for the Center of International Disaster Information, not to be confused with the White House press room, 
thinking is that people have lost everything, so they must need everything. So as donors, we just send everything. Now, I'm sure everyone's had a really good time, but let me remind you, like our people in Louisiana, the tide is high and rolling on. I'm in Germany, and I'm the show is yours. Okay, the second disaster there too. The first being that there is a clear evidence of an excess of items donated, and the fact that most of these are in fact inappropriate. Appropriate items can be defined as those that provide immediate relief, such as food, water, masturbation. <laughs> Did I not mention I was horny? <laughs> Inappropriate items can be defined as, as those that really serve no purpose at all. Like that petition you signed in your last persuasive round, Trump's more fun is Joe Stein, Gary Johnson. <laughs> MJC's attempts at winning at this tournament. <laughs> destroying over 2,400 homes and buildings. However, relief started to pour on a site such as those in Alberta, Canada. The Vancouver Sun cites this relief on June 20, 2016, as a plastic bag jammed haphazardly with 20 pounds of dishes, a cardboard box packed with marmalade, and another bag full of $30 worth of batteryless flashlights, mouthwash, baby shampoo, and baby suits. <laughs> We can't prevent the first disaster from striking, 
but we can prevent the second disaster from ever being placed on the list of things a victim needs to worry about. Oh, and I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Who just said some of the A, lets it sit through their entire speech, and never addresses it? Well, my friend Niall here was just about as useful to my community as all of these donations are! <laughs> Move on. 